prescription for peace. We started this about three weeks ago, God's powerful prescription for peace. We said, you know, if you're facing the storm, we want you to know that God wants you to have peace. God wants to be there and calm the storms in your life. God wants to comfort you. And we, we, we talked about how Jesus definitely had power over the storms of life. When he was here on this earth, his disciples were all worried when they were in a boat. But Jesus wasn't worried. He had the peace of God on the inside of him, which tells us even when we're facing a storm, you can still have peace in your heart. Amen? We went to where we started in Philippians chapter 1 in verse 1 where it said, Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints of Christ Jesus, which are in Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons, and it says, grace be unto you. Man, thank God for God's grace, amen? If you've ever messed up and you've relied on God's grace, please say amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Grace be unto you and peace. Right there, the Apostle Paul saying, God has grace for you, and you can feel and sense and receive God's peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. God gives us peace, and the Lord Jesus Christ gives us his peace. And the peace that Jesus gives us is for eternity. He says, my peace I give to you, not as the world giveth you I peace, uh, but, but when I give you peace, you really have peace. Now, in Philippians 4, uh, chapter 4, and verse 7, it says this, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Well, that's true. When you're going through a very hard time in your life, things seem to be coming against you. Storms seem to be raging against you. Emotional things seem to be slapping you. Uh, financial things or whatever it would be. The Bible says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. There's a peace that we can have in the midst of a storm. Shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So God is telling us that you and I can have his peace. You and I can feel the peace of God even though we are facing a storm in our life, even though we're facing a situation in our life, even though things seem to be coming against us in our life, even though there's emotional upheaval in our hearts. God says, I can calm that storm and I can give you peace in your, in your mind and in your heart. Say, thank you, Jesus. God promises his peace to us. Now, what we did is we went and we said, okay, verse 7 said, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. But before that, God actually gives us a prescription on how to have that peace. And that's why he says, and now the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and mind. He says that because before that, he actually writes out a prescription on how you and I can have peace when storms are all around us or if storms are trying to uh, cause us to sink or uh, give up. Now, the, uh, the first point we made a couple weeks ago is this. In Philippians 4, verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. So part, so part of the prescription for having peace when there's a storm brewing all around you Part of it is to start to rejoice. It sounds silly, but that's what God says. You know, the Bible does some funny things. It says, forgive so you'll be forgiven. Forgive and you'll feel better. That sounds odd. It seems like if we slap the person, we'd feel better. But God says, no, you forgive and then you'll feel better. The Bible says, give and it'll be given back to you. That sounds odd. I want you to give to me. But God says, if I give to you, then I'll be blessed myself. God has a way of turning things around. He says, now, if you're not happy, things are going uh, funny in your life, things seem to be slapping you around, rejoice. I don't feel like rejoicing. I feel like whining, but God says rejoice. So you just give God a hand clap right now, why don't you? Just give him a rejoice. <laughs> then, we went, then we went to point two, and point two was be gentle and not hostile. Be gentle and not hostile. Sometimes when you're going through a tough time, you have a short fuse. I don't know if parents have ever noticed this, but sometimes when you're upset, things aren't going right at work, uh, you're short with the kids. You know the story about the man, his boss yells, him at, yells at him at work, so he comes home, the wife's there, he yells at the wife. The wife turns around and yells at the kids. The kids turn around and kick the dog. It seems like whatever, whatever's going on, we, we take it out on somebody else. So the natural thing is when you're going through a tough time, is to get angry or upset or to take it out on somebody to be short-tempered. And, and God's saying, look, I want to give you a secret, a prescription for peace. And the prescription for peace is simply this, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, and then let your moderation be seen by all men. That's how it says it. Let your moderation be seen by all men, for God is here. 
God is with us. But what it's saying is let your gentleness be seen by all men. That means that when I sow gentleness, I get gentleness. If I'm on a stormy sea, I want the sea to be gentle. How, how many here agree? Amen? Amen? So when storms of life come against you, one of the things God says is, first of all, rejoice. Doesn't make sense to our natural mind, but rejoice. The next thing is, don't be hostile, be gentle. Why? Because when you sow something, you receive it back. If you want the storm to stop, you don't help stir the storm up by moaning and groaning and complaining and yelling and giving other people a hard time. You do that by sowing peace, amen? So be gentle, not hostile. Turn to somebody and say, listen to him, be nice to me. Then we said, point three, uh, Almighty God in his wisdom knew that my sister would be on this earth at this time and coming to this church. And, and number three was just for her. Uh, decide not to worry. My sister went to the doctor the other day and they gave her good news. She said, the doctor said, don't worry. I said, I bet you were mad at the doctor because you like to worry. <laughs> I said, I'll try to give you something to worry about. Sometimes we, we like to worry, but God says, look, one of the things you don't want to do is, is moan and groan because uh, you want to rejoice. One of the things you don't want to do is be harsh with others because you want to peace inside yourself. So be gentle with others and you'll reap peace. And another thing is decide not to worry. You say, that's impossible. That's hard. A lot of things seem hard when you first start doing it. But after you start doing it, then it gets easier and easier and easier and easier. You used, to, you used to not be able to walk, and then one day you were able to walk. You used to not be able to ride a bike, and one day you were able to ride a bike. You weren't able to talk. and so you, you said funny things, blah, 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 ga, ga, goo, goo, and da, da, and ma, ma, and pretty soon now you're speaking. So everything can be difficult at first, but you can do it in Jesus' name. You can decide not to worry, amen? You say, no, but I was brought up that way. Well, you, your father now is almighty God, and he's not a worry wart. God doesn't worry about nothing at all. Then we said number, number, number four. We went to number four, and in everything, pray. In everything, we need to pray. He says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer. Uh, we should pray about everything. We should pray in every situation that we're in. We should always pray. My pastor, Pastor Summerall, it, it, people would know that worked for him. If you walk behind him when he was walking down the hallway, he didn't know you were there. He'd be praying in the spirit. He would always be praying because he was, he was somebody who understood. A lot of things could be going on, but what you want to do is you want to make sure you pray. In, in every situation, make sure you pray. See, what happens is sometimes we get mad at God. Why did you allow this? Why is this happening? I'm going to quit praying. I'm going to quit running to God. I'm going to run away from God. I don't want to pray to God. I want to yell at God. The Bible says, look, first of all, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is with you. Uh, make sure you're gentle. And then don't worry about anything, and then pray. Make sure you go to God. That's where our strength is, amen? Our strength is when we go to God, not when we run from God. There's a tendency for all of us to get mad at God at different times in our lives. And if we're not careful, God is our strength. God is where we get our strength. And if, if we could turn around and we start to run away from God, we lose our strength. We, use the, we lose the joy of the Lord. We lose that peace that's available. So we need to spend time in prayer. Turn to somebody and say, uh, you can pray, but not right now out loud. Go ahead. Now let me talk to you for a minute about point number five. If you join me in uh, Philippians 4, verse 6, it says this, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer, and then it says a word that's interesting. It says, and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So it says uh, everything by prayer and supplication. I've been asked over the years, what in the world is supplication? We're going to talk about that today. Before we talk about supplication, though, I want to talk to you about the different types of prayer. And different people uh, may have different titles for the different types of prayer, but let me just give you some uh, the, the titles I give it. First of all, there's a prayer of agreement. When you and I pray, we can come together. If two on earth shall agree on earth, a, a, a asking, as touching something, asking, the Lord will do it. So you and I can have a prayer of agreement. We see the, the disciples or the apostles being told to go in the upper of the room and pray together. And then the Holy Ghost came. There was a prayer of agreement. Uh, in the early church, uh, some of the apostles were treated rough, and they went back to their own people. And they all prayed together, and the house was shaken where they were at. And the power of God hit. So there's something about the prayer when you and I come into an agreement. 
I grab your hand, you grab my hand, we pray together, we believe together. There's power in the prayer of agreement. Amen? What happens a lot of times is you and, you and somebody will grab hands and you guys will have a prayer of agreement and then that person will walk away going, oh, I don't think it'll ever happen. That breaks the prayer of agreement. If you pray a prayer of agreement, stick with the prayer. Amen? So there's a prayer of agreement. There's also a prayer of thanksgiving where you can pray and give God thanks. The reason I'm saying this is because we're going to get to supplication in a minute, but to get there we have to understand there's different types of prayer. There's, there's a prayer of agreement. There's a prayer of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is where you thank God for the things he's done for you. Thank you, Father God, you've blessed me. Thank you, Father God. You thank him for the things he's going to do. Thank you, Father God, that you're going to bless me. Thank you, Father God. So a prayer of thanksgiving is where you really go to the Father and give him thanks and give him thanks and give him thanks. And then there's a prayer of worship. Now, the prayer of worship sounds kind of like the prayer of thanksgiving, but it's a little different. That is, the prayer of thanksgiving is you're thanking God for what he's done or what he's going to do. And the prayer of worship is you're thanking God for who he is. God, you're a wonderful God. You're almighty. God, you're good. I praise you, Father God, that you're such a good God. I thank you, Father God, that you're a God that supplies all of our needs. I thank you, Father God, that you are just a good God. You're a gentle God. You're God of peace. We thank you, Father God, that you are so wonderful. That's the prayer of worship. So you can have a prayer of intercession. That's the next one, prayer of intercession. And that is where I pray for you or you pray for me. You can have a prayer of worship where we worship God. A prayer of thanksgiving, we thank God for what he's done. We can have a prayer of, of agreement where we come into agreement. So all these are types of prayer. Each one of those are important. A prayer of agreement, when you and I can grasp hands and agree on something, that's important. It's in the Bible. The prayer of intercession, praying for each other, that's important. It's in the Bible. God says, I looked all around for somebody who'd stand in the gap and couldn't find anybody. So the prayer of intercession is important. The prayer of worship, where you worship God, is important. The prayer of thanksgiving, thanking God, is important. So now we come to this, supplication. Remember, the, the verse we were reading is in Philipp, excuse me, Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Now, if you listen, with thanksgiving, we're going to get there in a minute, but remember, thanksgiving is a type of prayer. So is, so is a supplication. Supplication simply means this, petition. When you petition God, when you request from God. See, when you're worshiping Him, you're not requesting. When you're giving Him thanks, you're not requesting, you're thanking Him. So this is a prayer where you petition God, you request something of God. I'll give you some examples. I wrote them down so I could share them with you so you understand what the prayer of uh, intercession really is. I mean, the prayer of uh, supplication really is. In David, David went to God and requested of God, petitioned God, had a prayer of supplication, and asked for mercy. How many of us have ever need mercy? Say amen. Amen. It says here in uh, Psalms chapter 4, verse 1, Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me. This is a prayer of supplication. This is where he's requesting God. He's petitioning God to give him mercy. The next one I wrote down so we could look at it is, how many of you have ever needed God's leading in your life? God's direction in your life? Well, David has a prayer of supplication or a prayer of petition or a prayer where he requests of God. And listen to what he says in Psalms chapter 5 and verse 8. He says, lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. Because of mine enemies, make thy way straight before me. He says, lead me. Show me what I'm supposed to do. There's enemies, and I want to make sure I do the right thing because uh, I need to know which way to go. Do I go to the left or do I go to the right? Do I go here or do I go there? Do I go over here or do I go over here? Tell me what to do. And, and God says, that's a prayer of supplication, a prayer of petition, where you're petitioning God. You're supplicating before God and saying, God, please, I humbly ask you. Uh, and he asked him for a leading. Another one is deliverance. Uh, David asked God for deliverance. If you're ever in a situation and you say, man, I need delivered out of this, that's a prayer of supplication, a prayer of petition, request. Hear the words of David as he cries out to God and makes a request. He says, return, O Lord, at Psalm 6, 4, by the way, says, return, O Lord, deliver my soul. O save me for thy mercy's sake. 
He says, I need you to deliver me. I need you to lead me. I need your mercy. I need your mercy. I need you to lead me. I need deliverance. He keeps requesting or supplicating before God or petitioning God. And that's when God says prayers and petitions. He's telling us supplicate before him. Ask him. Yell out to him. Call out to him. God is good. Amen. Another one is, is Daniel. Remember Daniel? You guys remember the story of Daniel? If you remember the story of Daniel, uh, say amen. amen. The story of Daniel, I'm going to tell you it, and then we're going to read it. But I just want you to hear. A lot of us understand that D Daniel was someone who loved God. Daniel, by the way, the book of Daniel gives prophecies for today and for tomorrow and, and beyond. Daniel understood things about the future that little ever understood. He would get prophecies from God, and he would see things in the future. He would understand things, and he would ask God. He would supplicate before God. He would request of God. He would petition God, could you tell me what's going on? So we know that for a fact. But the story that we all think about when we think about Daniel is Daniel in the what? Lion's den, right? Well, the story about Daniel in the lion's den has a whole lot to do about Daniel petitioning God, a prayer of supplication. Now, if it worked for Daniel, we ought, to we ought to really get an understanding of it because we need it in our lives. So let's read the, the story about Daniel. As you know, the king puts out a word, a, a, a saying, saying you can't have a request of any other God but me. We're going to start in Daniel 6, verse 6. It says, And these presidents uh, and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents and all the kingdom and the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together and established a, ro a royal statute. And they all got together and they had this statute against Daniel and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition. Everybody say petition. That's supplication. Anyone anyway, that ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days. A petition is a request, a supplication, a petition. They say we're passing this decree that nobody can ask a petition. Nobody can have a prayer of supplication to anybody at all, any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king. He shall be cast into a den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. The law of the Medes and Persians said this. Once you write a law, you can't change the law. And they're saying, we want to get Daniel trapped. So what we're asking is that you'll say nobody can make a petition Nobody can have a prayer of supplication, a prayer of request to any other God, only you, king. And I want you to write this, they said, so it can never be changed. And if they do, they're thrown in a lion's den. It goes on and says, Wherefore, King Darius, in verse 9, signed the writing of the decree. And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, watch this, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chambers toward Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, and he did after time, as he did before. Now watch. Then these men assembled. Now watch what they're saying, because they were listening to Daniel. They snuck in. They've watched Daniel. Watch this. Then these men assembled, these guys that were against Daniel, who, who hated him because he was uh, looked upon better than they were by the king. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication. Everybody say supplication. Remember, well, to have peace, what do we do? Prayers and supplication. See, Daniel, clear back in the Old Testament, is having a prayer of supplication. These guys come in and they hear Daniel calling out to God for a request. They hear Daniel asking God for something, petitioning God. That's what they hear. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hath thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition, see supplication and petition are the same. You're petitioning God, you're supplicating before God. Thou shall, uh, uh, that shall ask a petition of any God or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, this is true. This is a true thing. According to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which I cannot change. 
Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor do they, uh, does he consider the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition. Everybody say petition. Three times a day. What we're trying to get across is this. Supplication is when you petition God. Supplication is when you request of God. Uh, supplication is important. It, they did it. David did it. Daniel did it. And we know the rest of the story about Daniel. They threw him in the lion's den, and uh, the lions didn't eat him. Uh, then the king came and said, are you still alive? And he said, yeah, I'm alive. And then he took the king brought him out of the lion's den and threw all those people that had come against him into the lion's den. So it's a good thing to, to pray and to supplicate, supplicate and uh, petition God. Amen? Now, not only is there a prayer petition or supplication by David and by Daniel, but also Jesus Christ tells you and I to have a prayer of supplication, a prayer of petition. And that's what, when they came to him and said, uh, John the Baptist has taught his disciples how to pray. Can you teach us how to pray? He said, uh, pray in this manner. And when he started to pray, and part of his prayer was in Matthew 6, 11, he said this. This is a supplication or a request before God. In Matthew 6, 11, give us this day our daily bread. He's petitioning God. He's supplicating before God. It's a prayer of supplication where you ask, you request, and you petition Almighty God. He says, give us this day our daily bread. So we can do that. We can ask God. Amen? Some people only think about the prayer of what some would call consecration. Uh, your will be done. There's a prayer of consecration where you say, thy will be done. But there's also the prayer where you just request and you ask God. You petition God. See, thy will be done. Jesus prayed that prayer. Jesus prayed, thy will be done. When, when he was going to go to the cross, he said, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But if not, thy will be done. So that's a prayer of consecration. But there's different types of prayer. And some people always say, thy will be done. God says, I already told you my will. For instance, let me give you an example. How many know that God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of God? Yes. So there's no reason to pray and say, God, do you want me saved? There's no reason to say, do you want my mother-in-law saved? Even though some of you don't want your mother-in-law saved. The truth is, God wants your mother-in-law saved. He really does. Some don't want their, their son-in-law saved. But God wants all people to be saved and come into the knowledge of God. So there's no reason to say, Father, I'm going to pray for my friend and thy will be done on whether he's saved or not. No, God wants them to be saved so we can say, Father, uh, give me an opportunity to share the gospel. Please let me know how to share the gospel. Please bring other people across their path. Please, oh, please, Father, open the door. Let the radio speak to them. Let newspapers speak to them. Let the internet speak to them. Let, let them be convicted by your Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm calling them in in Jesus' name. That's okay to pray that way. Why? Because we don't need to pray a prayer of consecration. Thy will be done. We already know his will. Amen. Amen. So Jesus, when he said, thy will be done, he was just consecrating himself. He, he knew, okay, I'll give myself. But the prayer of petition, the prayer of supplication, is where you request God and say, God, I need something from you. If you need peace, if you need peace, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Have peace. <laughs> and then pray and have supplication. So pray and ask God, Father, I need your peace. I ask your peace. I receive your peace. Pray for God to change the situation. It's okay. You supplicate before God. God, I have a request. Could you turn this thing around? God, I need your help. Will you please help me? The, the disciples or the apostles, we make fun of them. They're in the boat. Some of us have mocked them and made fun of them. Even I have thought it was fairly kind of humorous. Here you have Jesus Christ in the back of the boat laying on the pillow. Jesus Christ who has multiplied fish. Jesus Christ who has walked on water. Jesus Christ who have lame, who have healed the lame. Jesus Christ who have healed the leopards and opened blind eyes. Jesus Christ who turned water into wine. He's laying there sleeping in the back of the boat and a storm hits and they get so upset and they get so nervous and we, we almost mock them because they say, Jesus, don't you care about us? Look at the storm. And, and we all mock them and say, they're so silly. He gets up and he says, peace be still, and he brings peace. And we mock it and make fun of it. Why would they get so upset with Jesus in the boat? Listen, they did the right thing. They supplicated 
They prayed. They went to Jesus. So when you and I are facing a storm, yes, Jesus is in your boat. Yes, you are in Jesus' boat. But yes, it's time to turn and say, God, I need your help. Amen? Amen. So we make fun of them, then we have to make fun of ourselves. And, and we make fun of ourselves enough. Why don't we just say, you know, they need God's help. I need God's help. They had to ask Jesus. I have to ask God. Amen? So it's okay. The Bible says, look, rejoice, but also make sure you pray and supplicate. Give a request to God. And when you give a request to God, make sure you're specific. Ask God what it is you're asking for. Ask God, Father, please forgive me for this situation. Father, please do this. Father, please do that. God wants to bless you. Amen? God wants to bring peace to you. Petition God. And then the sixth thing, I believe, in the petition or the uh, prescription, God's powerful prescription for peace. First, we, of course, rejoice, like we said. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is with you. Uh, Be gentle and not hostile. Uh, Don't worry, Patsy. Don't worry. And then pray. And then uh, petition God. It's okay to petition God. You can worship him and all that, but make sure you petition him. Now, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. And then it says, with thanksgiving. So the, the next point, point number, what is it? Six is this. Give thanks. Give thanks. It's important that we give thanks. It's important that we break through And start to give thanks. Because the devil, the enemy, the Bible says is is the devil, he's your enemy, would like to stop you from giving thanks. He wants to stop you from giving thanks. Rejoice is one thing. Giving thanks is another. That's thanking God for what he's done. Making sure that we thank him for what he's done and what he's going to do in our lives. See, thanking God for what he's done, that's being grateful. Thanking God for what he's going to do is faith. Father, I thank you. I'm in the middle of a storm, but you're going to bring me out of this. I thank you, Father God, that I'm in the storm, but you're going to deliver me. That's called faith. Thank you, Father God, for what you've done. That's called gratitude. Thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do. Thank you, Father God, that you're giving me the victory. That's called faith. So when we start thanking God in the middle of a storm, in the middle of a disaster, in the middle of a situation, in the middle of grief, in the middle of whatever, when you start rejoicing, it's good. That's a good thing. But when you start thanking God, thank you, Father God, I'm delivered from this. Thank you, Father God, you're delivering me from this. Thank you, Father God, I'm getting through this. Thank you, Father God, I'm getting on the other side. Thank you, Father God, I'm not going under, I'm going over. Thank you, Father God, you're delivering me. Thank you, Father God, I have the victory because of you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. And all of a sudden, things turn around. Amen? So here, why don't you do this? Because sometimes it's hard to do this. Put your hand up like this, if you would, please. Because I know how hard this is. I've been there. Now, you may have been going through a lot of stuff in your life. Maybe the grief is trying to uh, just hold you down and get you uh, to tell you you'll never get through this. Maybe it's a financial situation, a marital situation. Maybe it's a, something at school. The professors are giving you a hard time. I don't know what it is, but, but look, I know it's hard. So put your hand like this, like as a fist. Now, here we're going to do this together. Because just like, uh, you're not babies, but I'm saying, just like a baby has to, take, has to crawl first and then get up and then start to walk. Why don't we do this? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father God, you're delivering me. Thank you, Father God. I give you praise. Thanking God for what he's done. I thank you, Father God, for what you've done in the past. I thank you, Father God, you delivered me in the past. I thank you, Father God, you brought, through, brought me through that stuff in the past. Thank you. Okay, now we got there. Let's go to number two. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We're getting stronger. Thank you, Father God. Let's go. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God. Let's go to three. Let's go to five. Thank you, Father God. Let's put both hands up. Thank you, Father God. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise. We praise you. 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 Thank you, Father God, that grief is broke in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. You're bringing me through this situation. I thank you, Father God. I praise you, Heavenly Father. Father, I give you thanks. I give you thanks for what you've done, and I give you thanks for what you're doing, and I give you thanks for what you're going to do in my life. I thank you, Father God. Now start thanking him. Right now, where you're at, start thanking him for things that he's done in your life. Remember the things that he's done in your life and start thanking him. Father, I thank you for what you did. 
Thank God. Think of some situation that he brought you through and start thanking him for that. I thank you, Father God. I thank you for that time in my life. I see it, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Father God, when that bus was going to, or when that truck was going to hit me, that you somehow made that truck miss me, and that's a true one for me. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God. When they said I was dead, you decided I didn't have to die. I thank you, Father God. I praise you, Father God. When they said it was all over in the church, it wasn't over. I thank you, Father God. I praise you, Father God. I praise you, Father God. When finances looked like they were just going to go under, somehow you turned it around. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God. I thank you. 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 Now start thanking God for the next thing, the situation changing where you're at right now. I thank you, Father God. That grief is broke. I thank you, Father God. The victory is mine. I thank you, Father God. I thank you that you're bringing me through this. I thank you, Father God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I thank you that your peace is within me. I thank you, Father God. If you've done it before, you're doing it again. I thank you. 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 I'm looking around this room. Nick, you're over there. Man, you should be praising God. Standing up. Stand up, Nick. Just start praising God. You ought to be thanking God right where you're He was supposed to be dead. He's alive. Thank God. 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 John, John, stand up. Give God. Nick, stay up. Stay up, Nick. Get up. Nick, Nick, stay up, Nick. Nick, stay up. Start thinking of God thanks. Give God thanks. If you've had God spare you, if you've had God bless you, if you've had God turn a situation around, if you've been in the midst of a situation and God's blessed you, stand up and give him thanks. Stand up and give him thanks. If you've had one, if you don't, don't. But if you had, uh, Lisa, man, you ought to be standing up and thanking God. You and I have been to the dark side. We've been there, but the devil couldn't hold us. We made it back up. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Give God thanks. Give him 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 thanks. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God. How about this? Just remain standing, if you would, just for a minute. How about this? When you messed up and the devil whispered in your ear, it's over. God's mad at you. You're damned for eternity. You messed up big this time. He's not going to forgive you. And then you found the mercy of God. Thank you, Father. If that's ever happened to you, just give God thanks. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father God. You've forgiven me. I thank you, Father God. I praise you, Father God. The enemy's been telling me that I can never be cleansed, but you've cleansed me. The enemy's been telling me that my sin will never leave your mind, but you said you've dropped it in a sea so deep that you, it's gone forever. I thank you, Father. The devil's told me that I, I, I just can never cleanse myself, but you've said that Jesus' blood has cleansed me. And I thank you, Father God. I thank you for your grace, Father. I thank you, Father God, when the enemy told me I would never be used of you again, that you've used me again. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, I thank you. I praise you. I praise you, Father God. I praise you, Father God. How do I have peace? Well, who's trying to steal your peace? The devil. He's telling you, You'll never make it to the other side. He's telling you, God's mad at you and never will forgive you. He's telling you, you'll never have joy in your life again. He's telling you, it'll always be dark from this moment on. He's telling you, there'll never be someone that close to you ever again. He's telling you all kinds of things. Why don't we just thank God for bringing things into our lives in the past and thank him for bringing things into our life in the future. Just thank him. Thank him now. Give him praise. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Heavenly Father. Just put your hand on the person's shoulder next to you, if you would, please, and I want to pray for them and you. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The God of peace. Give us peace that passes human understanding. Oh, you understand it, though we may not. Shall keep our hearts 
and our minds through Christ Jesus. Father, I ask that your peace would flow into the hearts of all those that are here today. May the peace of God be in your heart. May the peace of God calm that storm. May the peace of God renew your hope. May the peace of God strengthen your faith. May the peace of God bring you through. May the peace of God rest in your heart and in your mind through Christ Jesus. Peace. Be still, storm. That storm that's been raging in your heart or your mind. The storm that's been raging in your thoughts and your emotions. Peace. Peace. Storm, be stilled now. Father, we thank you. We praise you for your peace that passes our own understanding. Amen.